Hey all, it's Wednesday video two. So we just went through these six elements um, and I applied them to a World War Z movie poster. So we're gonna take a look now at the last three, which are probably the most in depth, especially because you need to talk about contextual and visual in your papers, as I expressed in the last couple of videos. So I have made a thesis statement PowerPoint that I'll put online and um, we'll go over a couple of the visual elements a little bit more in application to a, the World War Z poster. All right, so you're basically doing the same thing. Again, you choose a movie poster, you look at it and describe what's going on in it, um, and this is before you start writing the paper. Then you think, okay, I have to talk about context, I need to talk about a visual element, so what is the most important in terms of those two things, and also, what else do I need to talk about? What else should I talk about? What's important to making my point for this rhetorical appeal? So your point is going to be one of three things. You're arguing that the entire movie poster is effective in terms of achieving its goal or its purpose with its intended audience. Or number two, it's completely ineffective at achieving its purpose or goal with its target audience or number three number three is probably the best option it often produces the most well thought out papers and option number three is while the contextual elements of race gender wealth whatever and the two visual elements of proximity and alignment are working well in x movie poster so and so's movie poster um, it relies too heavily on ethos and the logos is unclear or the structure is unclear. Okay. So that would mean it's a more complicated or mixed review. And I will provide a template for those in the thesis statement PowerPoint. Okay. So let's jump into the PowerPoint and we'll talk about thesis statements and then these last three things to hopefully clear up any questions you have so far. This probably is not a paper that you have really written, but if you have, great job, do what you do. All right, thesis statements. So thesis statements are spoilers. I want to know up front in the paper in paragraph one what you're going to talk about. And I have provided a template, like I said, for this paper. So the thesis statements should be um, all along the same lines, and we're going to look at a few successful ones. Okay, so... They are part of the genre of academic writing. You know that you've written thesis statements before. Um, we're going to talk about the basic definition of them. What are the four items you should include in your thesis statements? And it should say three basic formats. I've already listed those. And then the language of a thesis statement. Okay, so a lot of times with thesis statements, I'm not going to read this all to you, but it's the DNA of a paper or it's a roadmap. So for example, if you're traveling to Las Vegas from here, you need to go um, through Oklahoma first or through, um, I don't know, you'll have to go south and then west, right? So just like you would hit certain road markers on a road map, you would also do the same thing in order in your paper. So if you're talking about logos first in your paper, then in your thesis statement, you should mention something about logos. You do not abs absolutely have to say the word logos, but it should be close enough that we I know I can connect um, and your reader can connect that you're, when you say structure, you mean logos. So if it's first in your paper, it should be first in your thesis statement. If you talk about pathos second, then it should be second in your thesis statement and so on and so on. Okay, so it's just about reflecting the thesis statement, reflecting the direction of the paper. Okay, so the four things to include in your thesis statements. The name of the movie post, the movie or the author, creator, whoever. So this would be the producer and the movie name, okay? Here um, would actually, so that's the first two. Sorry, I mixed those together. So this is the producer, what company is putting out, and this is the actual movie title, all right? This is the most important thing. 
is the third one here, your claim slash argument for your paper. This is, is it effective or ineffective, or is it both? And then the basic reasons for your claim are going to be the nine elements. And again, you should not put all nine in. You must put something from visual, something from context, and then choose three to five others of the nine because the paper is not long enough for you to include all of them. And again, we'll talk about structure tomorrow. <clears throat> so here are the three templates that I already mentioned. The first one is uh, this movie, so-and-so's movie poster. So you would fill in the blanks, uh, Columbia's, um, whatever movie that they came up with. I'm sorry, I don't, oh, like Lion Gate. Lion's Gate movie, The Hunger Games, is completely ineffective or is completely effective because of X, Y, and Z. So it'd be, it's um, foreboding tone or the use of fire, etc. Okay, um, and then you would fill in X, Y, and Z. So these are templates. You need to plug in the actual information. I don't have all of the producers memorized for the movie posters that I am letting you uh, write about, but just those are easy fixes. Just zoom in, look at who produced it, and you can also use something called Google. All right, so the second thing is, again, fill in the blank, fill in the blank, is completely ineffective, and we're not using language of good or bad. We're using it is successful, unsuccessful, working, not working, effective, ineffective. Um, it is ineffective because of X, Y, and Z. And again, these are the things that you would fill in for your rhetorical elements. This is the third type that I was talking about, the one that's more complicated and often produces better, stronger papers because students have thought through it more. Um, again, it starts out with in so-and-so's movie poster title, the use of X and Y, so these are rhetorical elements, is effective because of B and C. So you just elaborate a little bit more on your evidence or your reasoning or your supporting details. But the use of blank, another rhetorical element, is ineffective because of these other reasons. Okay, so I know there are a lot of blanks here, but these are templates that the nature of them. Go ahead and fill them in with um, your opinions and whatever specific movie details that you're using in your paper. Okay, to make it more specific and less nebulous, here is the thesis statement and the sentence before from the sample paper that I had you guys read for Tuesday. So this is just uh, one sentence that I took to kind of, because uh, she didn't put the first name in the thesis statement, but this is all her thesis statement from Rogers down to Americans. So I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk about why it's good. Rogers, a political cartoonist for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, created cartoon Loud Music, which was effective in handling this topic by reminding people that we have faced murders of this extreme based on race before, eliciting sympathy and frustration from the readers in order to be a catalyst for change and using the shadows from the gloomy background of the graveyard to get across a message of white encroachment on African Americans. All right, so I know it's a lot. It's a lot of words, but it's great because all of these get, really give me a roadmap for the paper. So we have Rob Rogers. That's our person. We have who he is. That's important. We have the actual work itself. It was a political cartoon. You guys are obviously using movie posters. Um, but they're in quotation marks. Yours should all be italicized or underlined because it's the title of a larger work. Um, and then she has a judgment here. It was effective. Effective at doing what? And then this is all of um, the structure of her paper. So first she would say, I would say pathos, el eliciting sympathy. And then, and frustration. A catalyst for change would be purpose. And then shadows. So purpose also relates to contextual information of race, war, in America, and then using the shadows from the gloomy background, that would be um, contrast in, in terms of a visual element. So she has all of the pieces here, all in order. Excellent, excellent thesis statement. All right, some pointers for thesis statements. Just avoid using opinion language like I like or I agree, I can't say this enough. Um, vague language, I probably pointed this out to some of you already, but things like, ooh, that's interesting, that tells me nothing about um, your judgment over it, just what is interesting, okay, go more specific. Absolutist language, um, a lot of times 
I can refute it or any audience could refute it. So if you say everyone in America loves X, I'll be like, okay, well, what about a three-year-old who doesn't even know what X is? How can they quote love it? So I'm going to be a jerk about this because absolutist language needs to be caught and um, just it, they're easy fixes. Some, most, use those words instead of these. Again, yeah, so I listed a couple of them down here for you guys. And uh, just be specific with your claims. So the th sample thesis statement I show you was a great way to be specific. All right, I went ahead and um, attached or put together a couple of slides for you guys. This is the stuff that we looked at in the last video. If you wanna look at it more, um, these are obviously not full paragraphs, they're just kind of like notes. And if you wanted to even take notes on your own movie poster, you can do it on the computer, you can print them out. I'm not making you do this, but this is what I mean by describe. Just what the heck's going on in the image at the very forefront. I guarantee that I will have looked at these things more than you guys have, um, so surprise me. If you're able to surprise me, that's going to count for a lot because it means that you have put in the time um, and the effort and the curiosity just to point out these details. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. We haven't actually looked at it together. So the last three elements, textual, contextual, and visual. So the first one, textual, we're not gonna spend much time on that because that's really easy. So again, the text is Brad Pitt, World War Z, and then all of this information down here. So we do have the date and uh, is offered in 3D. And then we have a little bit of information about the production details. This is not as important, which is why it's smaller and shoved to the bottom. So I would say in terms of text, this is um, really minimal, but it's also working really well, showing me that the movie's gonna focus on the star and also what is going on in the background here. Okay, so context. Again, we talked about the genre of a, an apocalyptic or even a zombie narrative. Um, I have put up Night of the Living Dead. That's obviously um, Romero's classic and kind of sparked the modern zombie trend. So you might do some research with um, dystopian genre, like The Hunger Games is one of the first movies of the dystopian genre in young adult to feature a female protagonist. That was a huge deal when it came out. So the Katniss Everdeen, the character, she is featured in the center of the Hunger Games movie poster. Think about uh, placement of other things. The Clockwork Orange one is really interesting and also really disturbing. There is a female in the um, Clockwork Orange movie poster. So see if you can find her and how she positioned. What does that mean? Have you seen that movie? What, what might it tell you about um, gender and the role of different, I guess, political systems or political um, beliefs in this fictional world. So here, context, again, uh, destruction, and this is a nice description here, long shot versus um, the close up. He's not looking at the audience, he's looking away, okay? So he's not focused on getting the attention of the audience, he's focused on um, trying to help slash create a solution to all this devastation. So again, context. Virus narratives are really popular right now. The Zika virus, um, H1N1, all of this comes from AIDS, um, a misunderstanding of AIDS. So there's a lot of research there that you can do with it if you choose something that is um, focused on virus narratives. Okay. So this you guys can read if you want. Um, it talks a little bit more about genre, and I've mentioned this word, dystopian, zombie, post-apocalyptic, fiction, action. A lot of the movies that movie posters that I have put online for you fall into these categories, so you might just um, do a search for them. We're going to show you later in the week how to uh, start doing research, where to go in the library, how to uh, do all this stuff online and um, how to cite for it as well. So for right now, just start getting ideas and then we'll go back and get the research. This I also put up, this was in terms of conventions. And um, so if we went back to something like this for visual elements, there are four of them. I would choose alignment first and foremost, and I've already talked about that in the previous video for this kind of hourglass shape, the um, invisible line, vertical line here, and the horizontal planes that kind of mirror each other, the stark contrast between black, white, and red, um, 
I would talk about contrast and alignment, and you can see the other two repetition and proximity in the PowerPoint I've already provided for you. But that's it for today. Turn in writing response three and go ahead and read those two documents for Thursday. See you guys later.